Hey, look, it's Shadows Over Mistara! This and its predecessor game, Tower of Doom, were my favorite beat em ups when I was a kid. Uh, they are really great. They're DD based, as you can tell by the DD logo that's flashing in every corner. Um, they, of course, are simplified, uh, so you don't get the full spread of complexity that D&D has, but you do get a lot more complexity than most other beat-em-ups. Even modern beat-em-ups don't have the same level of complexity that this game often had. Something like Castle Crashers is almost the same complexity, but it has the advantage of having a giant downtime system, where you can go into your castle and talk to people and upgrade your weapons and stuff by talking to people. This really doesn't have that. It does have a shop system, but it's very much uh, very fast-paced, because this was a quarter eater. You had to keep your systems running fast. You couldn't slow down. Oh, what are you doing up there? That's not where you spawn. Let's rescue us some villagers. So this was my favorite game in the arcade, but it was also my favorite game uh, when I got a home, com home computer capable of running MAME. Uh, MAME is what used to be required if you wanted to run this game. I'm going to name my character, ah, and it's going to rename her to Lucia. Uh, a nice little detail there. But um, uh, you, when, you try, when you try and set up MAME, it's a huge process. MAME is not the most friendly emulation system around. Uh, but I would always work through it because these games were really, really awesome. And one of the things about this game that's more interesting to me than the modern games is the level of tactics involved. You can see that I can see those guys waiting just off screen and they can see me, but until I move forward a little bit, they're not going to come in and trigger. Understanding what triggers which enemies and when they're going to attack and how they can attack is critical uh, to playing this game. Uh, and. Uh, and it, it has a very different feel. In Castle Crashers, if you have an enemy that's on the other side of the screen, you can reach them in like half a second. You can just dash over there real, real quick. But in this game, if the enemy is on the, ha the other half of the screen, you probably don't have enough time to reach him uh, before the battle ends. And you've got to keep your eye on all these enemies you can't reach, because they'll throw out some kind of middle, middle or long-ranged attack and, uh, uh, and screw you over when you're not expecting it. So it's a much more tactical game than uh, than you might expect. So here are some of the D and D enemies in the flesh. Sorry, they're kind of boss-like, so I'm concentrating a little bit. I want to beat these guys without using any magic, because I save all the magic for the boss. There, I got got him. Not hugely worried about you archer guys. Definitely not worried about you goblin guys. I should be though, because I'm clumsy about it. Alright, here's the first big boss here. And uh, the elf I always chose as a kid, because she was the strongest. Uh, in the early game, the elf is just really overpowered. She's like the red mage. Um, she can do basically anything she wants. Uh, and I'll show you that now, when I fight this boss. But the problem is, all of the other characters would gain levels and get stronger, and the elf really wouldn't. So let's switch over to ice. Oh, come on. I was a little bit too slow, and I ended up missing it. The inventory system in this game is something you really have to master, and it is not straightforward. Oh, I'm out of ice. Switch over to fireballs. I guess they had the same idea I did. And I'm down to, what, one more magic missile? I think that's probably good enough. What do you think? Well, let me go ahead and get run over a couple more times before I show you. Oh, that didn't work. Got ablative armor in the form of your random dudes. 
That's fine, though. Although I didn't kill him, the boss does have a timed limit here. And this is what was interesting about this game. It was a quarter chewer, but if you wasted your time, it was like, I have to get this guy moving, because I'm a quarter chewer and I need this guy to move on. And so, if you waste your time, the enemies just end up killing themselves or running away. And of course, you don't get anywhere near as many points as you would have. But you can see that as an elf, I have uh, four level one spells and three level two spells and two level three spells, uh, and then she starts ridiculously strong. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you a little bit of this game because I like it so much, um, but uh, I'm not going to play the whole thing in front of you. The only way I'd do that is if I was going to play it multiplayer. The Steam version has a lot of more, f a lot of more uh, new features. One of the features I really appreciated is this um, way that I could set it to look like my old, my old uh, memories of this by adding in the scan lines and bringing away the smoothing. I think the smoothing, the smooth version actually looks bad, but that's just me. Uh, in addition, it has a whole bunch of challenges and uh, an extra options stuff and a whole bunch of unlockables. Uh, and, yeah, some trophies. You'll notice that I did not get my magic back from stage to stage. Mm, nasty, huh? You gotta die and get spend your quarter to get your resources back. Anyway, if I was gonna play this through, I would not play as the elf. Uh, she's a little bit too limited for the end game. Um, I'd probably play as the f as the thief or the fighter. Those are both pretty good characters for the end game, in my opinion. You notice that I haven't used any special moves. Uh, this game is actually full of really great uh, uh, attacks that you can do, like dashing attacks and all sorts of other stuff. But in the end, you don't usually need to. If you're any good at controlling the area. Uh, you can just use things like these haste potions and your basic attacks, and as long as you are walking and hitting at the right time, uh, you can get away with almost everything. Very tactical game. Of course, I am playing it on easy. There are much, much harder modes, uh, and I'm not good enough to say that I would actually succeed at very many of those. I kind of thought I would die by now. Uh, I'm not very used to this emulator, and I haven't actually beaten the game um, in this emulator yet, so... It might not be an emulator. I, I might be misspeaking. It might be... It might be just a port, um, rather than an emulator. Either way, it's got lots of cool stuff. If you like beat-em-ups, maybe give it a shot. Uh, it's a Capcom-made game, so it's expensive. Uh, I think that it's still like 10, 15 bucks, um, even though these things are older than most of you. <laughs> but in my opinion, it's worth it. Oh, don't hit me. Oh, darn it. I bent over to pick up a piece of gold and uh, got my ass kicked. Greed will do that to you, kids. The grabby hands. Oh. It's okay, you don't have to release him. I'm, I'm happy with you not releasing him. So this is the second boss, and he is uh, he is what we would normally call the meat gate. He is the one that will take your $20 fee uh, in quarters uh, for the first 15 or 20 times you play him. Uh, and uh, this is not the right way to play him. But I wanted to die because this is plenty of uh, length on this particular video. I just wanted to show you a game that I really enjoyed as a kid and talk a little bit about how it's different than the games you see today. Well, it can continue, though, uh, and show you something else they did, where uh, they added in a whole bunch of alternate skins. Neat.